Good morning, good morning. Good morning, high school students. And also, a very, very welcome to our guests and parents who are here with us today. I'm Benny Caffrey, the head of school, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to this morning's holiday program. Uh, let me begin by saying thank you, thank you very much to the Pine School students and also my colleagues who have generously donated to our toy drive today. With our efforts, we support two local charities with these holiday donations, Natives Helping Natives and also the United Way of Martin County. We have representatives from both organizations here with us. Uh, if we could just uh, have Harry MacArthur stand and be recognized from Natives Helping Natives. We also have two team members from United Way of Martin County, Impact Coordinator Sarah Aviles, and also Business Development Coordinator uh, Tom Moonholland. Ms. Aviles will also say a few words. Please welcome Ms. Aviles to the podium. Good morning, everyone. How are you today? Good. On behalf of United Way, of Martin County, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for your support in collecting donations. The main goal of the United Way Holiday Project is to ensure that every child has a gift underneath the tree. A lot of little boys and little girls and older boys and older girls would not have a tree or a gift if it weren't for your support. With over 100 agencies, including the Pine School, we are guaranteed to meet the goals. Last year, we had over 800 children, close to 800 families, close to 12,000 toys, and 100 bikes. This year, we have less families and less children as we partner with other agencies in the community to make sure that families are on lists only once so that we can help more families in need and help them by providing more than what we would normally of one to two gifts. This year we've been able to collect almost 300 bikes, ensuring that close to two-thirds of our kids will receive a bike. For more than 30 years, United Way of Martin County has collaborated with Toys for Tots, also known as White Doves, to spread holiday cheer to families and children who otherwise lack during this time of year. Your contributions are inimitable and are beyond greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Aviles, for visiting our campus and being here to accept our donation. Again, we're very happy to support both Natives Helping Natives and United Way of Martin County. It is absolutely intentional that the Pine School's character trait of the month is generosity, and how wonderful it is to see such a tangible representation of that generosity here at our program today. Another way that Pine School Knights are generous is with their time. Many of you likely know that we have a 100-hour community service requirement for graduation. That being said, it's always inspiring to see what happens when that commitment to service transcends beyond simply meeting a requirement and instead becomes an intrinsic part of one's commitment to others. Today, we've invited Lily and Bella Crestel to speak about their family and the regular ways they volunteered, especially to help during the pandemic and alleviate food insecurity. I'd like to introduce Lily and Bella Crestel.
Community service has always been a prominent part of our family's lives. Growing up, we were always involved in some kind of community service, from beach cleanups to Thanksgiving meals, packing Thanksgiving meals, more recently fostering kittens. The pandemic has affected everyone in different ways, and for many locals, it resulted in the loss of their jobs and created uncertainty. In Palm Beach County, this meant that many workers in the hospitality industry lost their jobs due to shutdowns. As a result, workers and their families face food insecurity. For those of you who don't know, food insecurity occurs when there is uncertainty about where the next meal will come from and how to be able to feed oneself and one's family. In response, the Palm Beach Restaurateur started an organization called Hospitality Helping Hands, or H3, which formed at the height of the pandemic. H3 a weekly food distribution program line at the Port of Palm Beach to provide and distribute food and other necessities to members of the community in need, many of whom were local hotel and restaurant workers. Every Saturday throughout the pandemic, cars would line up as early as four hours before the lines actually opened, yet free weekly groceries and other necessities. Our family heard about it and we brought them home. Our task every week was to help pack up food or other items such as diapers, baby wipes, and pet food, which aren't covered by government programs, and prepare them to be distributed amongst families, as everything had to be ported up in the We usually packed produce, mainly okra, peppers, squash, potatoes, depending on what was available at the moment, because the majority of those were part of our surplus clean food farms. In addition to fresh vegetables, we also distributed government-funded FDA boxes that include milk, some sort of starch like rice or pasta, and protein. Sometimes we were even lucky enough to have whole chickens or trays of eggs that came from various organizations. After bagging or boxing up food items, we would stand at different stations when cars would drive through the line with their trunks open so we could put the groceries in their cars. For a lot of those people, the food that they got from that distribution was the only food that they and their families would receive for the entire week. Unfortunately, there wasn't always enough food to be distributed out to all those families, especially the people in the back half of the line. As jobs returned and the ports reopened to cruise ships, H3 pivoted its offerings and changed locations. Currently, H3 hosts monthly wellness fairs that focus on health, hygiene, and providing people with access to things that we usually take for granted, like showers, clothes, mobile laundry service, haircuts, access to vaccines, and health screenings, in addition to hot meals and groceries. One of the things that always struck me personally while we were volunteering was the realization of how privileged we are to have access to vital necessities just by driving to Publix or even having warm running water and electricity in a house that we can return to every day because that is not the case for everyone. I also realized that not everyone has as much living space as we do, which allows us to prevent the uh, to physically distance ourselves and prevent the spread of COVID. Not everyone has the luxury of that space. I believe I can speak for my whole family when I say how grateful we are for the opportunity to work with H3 and be out in the community helping people directly. And because many of the people we serve are Spanish speaking, it provides me the opportunity to practice speaking Spanish. I now encourage everyone to take a moment, especially at this time of year, to be grateful for everything that we may take for granted on a daily basis. We can make an impact by raising awareness and taking action, either through volunteering or supporting organizations like H3. Thank you and happy holidays. Thank you so much, Lily and Bella, for your wonderful message and for showing us all how our efforts can indeed make an impact. We gather together today not only to give gifts and celebrate generosity, but also to get into the holiday spirit. The most commonly celebrated winter holidays in our prime community are Hanukkah and Christmas. So we'll hear readings to help us all appreciate the origins of both holidays. And as no celebration is complete without a little music, We'll have some wonderful singing and playing as well. Here to get us started is our middle school chorus with Ding a Ding a Ding. Don't 
Thank you, Middle School Chorus. And now with the story of Hanukkah, Nick Del Fred. Hanukkah? <clears throat> Hanukkah is a celebration of a miracle that took place in the second century BCE. Under King Antiochus, the practice of Judaism was completely abolished. The Jews were forbidden from observing the holidays, reading the Torah, and worshiping in the temple. Many Jews, afraid for their lives, so they felt forced to follow the king's orders. But one, great, but one brave group decided that they would not submit to the king. They would not worship foreign gods or give up their Jewish way of life. This group was called the Maccabees, and they were determined to take back their temple and defend their religious freedom. Although matched in number, the Maccabees successfully took back the temple from King Antiochus. But then they were heartbroken to discover that the king had not taken care of their holy space. They got to work cleaning and purifying it, and they removed all the foreign idols and altars the king had set up inside. On the 25th day of the month of Kislev, the Maccabees held the glorious rededication ceremony. The word Hanukkah means dedication, and it comes from the moment when the temple was triumphantly returned to the Jewish people. The most famous story about the rededication comes from a Talmud, where we read that the Maccabees walked into the temple. They found enough oil to light the menorah for one night, one day, but miraculously, that small amount of oil lasted for eight days, which is exactly how long it took to make new oil. Today, the celebration of Hanukkah lasts eight days in honor of the miracles that occurred so many years ago. We light eight candles on the menorah, adding one each night. With every, can with every Hanukkah candle we light, we illuminate the most important messages of all. That we must always work to find the light in the darkness, and we must always work to keep the light of religious freedom burning for all people for all time. Praise are you, or our God, ruler of the universe, who made us holy for your commandments and commanded us to kindle the Hanukkah lights. Rukhatan and I, Elohinu Melachalam, Chaos Hanisi, Lavotenu, Nimotenu, Hayami Mahem, Hazvan Hazem. Blessed are you, Adonai our God, sovereign of Kabo, who performed wondrous deeds for our ancestors in days of old and this Thank you, Marin and Nicholas. And now we will hear from our uh, Steel Can Ensemble, Knights of Steel. Uh, before they begin, and while they're setting up, I want to just let everyone know, for those of you who joined us last night at our winter concert, you know that what's about to happen is actually an audience participation requirement. So we're going to, uh, this is what you're going to need to do. It's going to sound like this. Try that together. Three, two, one. Hey! All right. So wait for your cue, and I will let you know it's not when you think it is. So don't accidentally do it and look silly. But there is a hay coming your way, so look out. Please enjoy our nights. Uh, our nights. Our steel pan band.
wonderful playing Knights of Steel and great audience participation from everyone else. For our final reading, we will hear the recounting of the first Christmas from the Gospel of Luke. Christmas is one of the most important religious holidays for Christians, as it is when the Savior Jesus Christ was born to the Virgin Mary. Apart from its religious meaning to Christians, Christmas also has a significant place in our secular culture. It is a time to celebrate generosity, as we do here at the Pine School, as well as goodwill. From nativity scenes to Christmas trees, from Santa and his reindeer to gift giving, the traditions of Christmas abound. And now I invite Wade Singleton to read us our gospel. Uh, and it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria, so all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David to be registered with his Mary, with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, uh, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you, you will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Thank you, Wade. And now, this is Alvarado to lead us in our singing. I think singing is a loose term for this, but that's okay. So, this is one of our favorite traditions, here we go, of our holiday service. We have a three-part sing-along. Our first sing-along that we're going to start off with is Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. I'd like to ask Needed, except our youngest knights are kindergartners. Kindergarten, are you ready? You better get those parade hands ready. Let's go ahead and all sing along and say hi to kindergarten when they pass you to Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Oh uh -huh. 
song is called Hanako Hanaka, and this one you are going to want to stand up and dance. Please stay next to your chairs. Unless you're seniors, stay next to your chairs. Please enjoy Hanako Hanaka. Up we go! that we began when we became a K-12 school all on one campus. So it's really special that we're able to do this song all together. For those of you who are new this year or viewing new this year, this is quite a treat to behold. So we are going to be singing our 12 days of Christmas, but not in the traditional way that you would think. So make sure, grades, that you know exactly when you're supposed to go up. We are actually going to sing this song two times. So make sure you save your voices a little bit. Here we go. I'd like to ask that everybody sing the part that goes on the whatever day of Christmas and then make sure you stand up for your part. Here we go.
break ahead. 